All right, so the Barbie uh, movie is a very complex stimulus. A very complex stimulus that is not simple to understand. And the early uh, comments on it being a feminist thing, being a leftist crappy movie... I disagree. It is a it is not a leftist movie. A lot of the leftism, a lot of the toxic leftism shows up in this movie. But to me, just like was the case for American History X, you know, they show Jews, they show Nazis in American History X. But if you really want to conclude what is the sense, what is the moral sense presented by the movie because who's the villain and who's the hero you have to ask yourself this and who's the villain who's the hero and how do they become hero will matter to the moral sense of the movie which is why i've concluded that american history x was not a jewish subversive movie trying to mock neo-nazis it was a jewish written movie uh, that seek to empathize with neo-Nazis and that seek to present a truly hero position for the neo-Nazis. Uh, I will say that uh, Barbie is pretty much the same. It is something that leaves plenty of material for the leftists out there to be satisfied. They've heard their little punch joke on transgenderism. They've heard their little punch joke on the patriarchy. They've learned, uh, they have a whole movie here which frames a war of the sexes that will satisfy them. But the question is, to the naive observer of this movie, am I being presented a movie that tries to moralize me into leftism being the way to go? Is, is the hero of this movie a leftist? And I have to say that my answer is no. My answer is no. And despite the temptations of leftism that are presented to Barbie across the movie, what we get to understand is that the, the deep message of this movie is that feminist liberation will only send you toward more hell, toward a greater cage, there is no such thing as freedom. We are all plastics. And try to escape this object that you think people are looking at. Because the whole idea is that Barbie is an object of desire. And she wants to become human. But liberate you from this. Liberate yourself from this. You get into the greater cage of heterosexual reproduction. And... The maker of Barbie at the end of the movie. I don't know if she's the real maker or if she's a, uh, a an actress playing the maker of Barbie. But there's an old woman and they claim in the movie that she is the true maker of Barbie. And she appears and she gives the chance to Barbie to become a real human or to stay an object of desire forever. And Barbie chooses to become human with the feelings, with the mortality of it. But the first thing she does as a human, and that's the end of the movie, she gets pregnant. And the, the maker of Barbie is talking about the plastic things and the artificiality of this world. And she criticizes even the artificiality of Barbie. And she says, you know, Barbie, the patriarchy, this is all uh, a plastic world, but I'm going to bring you to LA and you're going to see as a real human that the, the, the world of real humans also is a plastic world. And that all that matters, that's what she says to Barbie at the end, all that matters are going to be the children you leave on this earth. So you have the maker of Barbie saying, yes, there is artificiality, yes, there is superficiality in the world. And yes, Barbie as an object of desire, it is a, a ridiculous capitalist enterprise. But what truly matters is baby making. And she says to Barbie, you can become human, you can have all those feelings, uh, but you're going to find that if you don't make babies, there's nothing, there's no meaning to your life. And the real world is just equally made of plastic.
So what we have here is a deeply heterosexual movie in 2023, uh, as explicit as it gets. Now, before we get there, we have a whole movie of War of the Sexes in which there are two universes in this movie. It's super complex physics. So I'm, I'm, I'm stunned by the complex physics of Barbie. We need to talk about it because it's not even physics. It's not even metaphysics. It's pataphysical what's happening in this movie. It is a mockery of the kind of multi-universe type of movies. And it is that there are references to the Godfather, references to the Planet of the Apes, references to some of the iconic movies. And I love it. I love it how they refer to all these movies. Uh, so I, I will take you through the whole uh, story that leads to Barbie getting pregnant. But I'll tell you that, to me, whatever could have happened in this movie, if at the end Barbie is pregnant, if at the end the world of plastics that she leaves is not patriarchy world, it's actually this, this war of the sexes as a whole that she abandons. And she finds her Ken in reality who knocks her up. Then it's a heterosexual movie as, as far as I'm concerned. And then they have properly settled the hero position as heterosexuality. So you can, you can put me, uh, you know, diversity, hiring actors, black, Asians, all you want. You can show me an L.A. of uh, diversity and people with brown hair and people who are brown. And you can put me five transgender in Barbie house if you'd like. I don't give a shit as long as the hero gets knocked up. That's a hetero movie, and I stand by it. James says, I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world full of plastic. It's fantastic. This is peak female black-pilled view of the world. It's not so black-pilled. It is females, and this is what we see in this movie. The, it is females understanding their power. And eventually, the, the Barbie world will be taken over by feminist ideas in this movie. Uh, so so let me let let me start from let me begin from the start because there is so much. This is a complex movie, all right? This is not this <laughs> this is probably the most complex movie of 2023, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. I know everyone would like to think, "Oh, it's Barbie, it's going to be this uh, ridiculous." No, no, no. It, it is a complex movie. Uh, they make it look like it's a normie movie, but it is not. So there are two universes here. We start in the, universe, the Barbie universe. And in the Barbie universe, she lives her life. And in the Barbie universe, females have way too much power. So that's, that's the first element that kind of distanciates this movie from pure leftism. The Barbie world of fantastics is a world in which females are the center of everything. Each of the females have their house, so that reminds us of the historical state of Native American tribes, with certain tribes uh, having a matrilinear uh, ownership of the house, and basically the males rotating around and handling inter-tribe politics, but females having their power grounded in the ownership of the house for their family and for their continuity. So basically, they have, uh, they have presented a form of Native American form of Barbie universe, but in which everything is pink, in which, of course, these females, they are, they are mocking the males, and they are taking them for granted, and they are evil to the males. And... and Ken is getting friend-zoned. Now, that's another example of this movie morally framing things, not as a leftist movie. The, the big problem that we see within the first few minutes of the movie is that Ken is beautiful, Barbie is beautiful, everything is perfect. Why don't we get penis to vagina? And, and this is where it's beautiful. I mean, they, they even make jokes around, well, we don't have penises and vagina. And Ken wants to sleep with Barbie, and, uh, and Barbie refuses the advances of Ken, and she says, tonight is girl night. 
And Ken is like, and Barbie says, anyways, what, what would we do if you were to sleep with me? And Ken is like, I don't know. <laughs> so the Barbie universe exists in a child's mind. The Barbie universe is to be fixed. The Barbie universe is problematic. What is the problem of Barbie universe? Too much female power. Too much female leverage over male. Who, and all of the Kens. And this is one thing that makes me uncomfortable about this movie. I would have liked to see a Barbie and one Ken. And then the supporting characters. But the movie works with the conception that there are many Barbies. Because they want to reproduce the true environment of a child's bedroom where there were many copies of Barbie and many copies of Ken. Now, there's only one Barbie uh, played by Margot Robbie and only one Barbie played by Ryan Gosling. So they are the main Barbie. To th they call them stereotypical Ken and stereotypical Barbie. So they've been assigned to have this form as they come from the store. Now. In Barbie universe, there are other people called Ken and other people called Barbie, and they are used up by a story. Just like in a child's bedroom, you know, there's this old Barbie that the child is going to have cut her hair. She's going to have put makeup on her. She's going to, and it's going to be an ugly clown. Now, the beautiful thing is that this ugly clown actually exists in this movie. It's the Marxist lesbian Barbie. <laughs> they call her Weird Barbie. And she is kind of the wise Barbie that knows, that knows everything about when the train of life just rolls over you, just how low you can go. <laughs> And so here, another framing of this movie that is not leftist, the Marxist lesbian Barbie it lives in her house and she doesn't look happy. It's like she really is the reject of this Barbie world and they really only go see her when they need uh, counseling on mental problems. <laughs> and so... The whole start of this movie is we are in this universe that is uh, totally unfair to males. And Kent, that's problematic for Kant. He's constantly get friend zoned. And you know, friend zone in a leftist moral movie, friend zoning would be fine. It would, hey, respect, respect the desires of the female. You have been friend zoned because she's not interested. What about consent? You have to respect consent. But no, in this movie, it's problematic that uh, Ken is being friend-zoned by Barbie, and th there will be a whole uh, direction that the movie takes on this. So the fact that they frame this as a problem is another thing that makes me say this is not a leftist movie. So eventually Barbie feels that there's something wrong. And, and you know, th this something wrong is that she's been... She's been, uh, I don't know exactly what, I, I don't remember what happens in the movie, but there, there's something that she does that is not stereotypical. Like she has one thought and, and she's like, hey, I just had one thought. And, and people start being alarmed in Barbie land. It's like, no, you shouldn't have thoughts. You're a stereotypical Barbie. Uh, and so because that's a mental problem as they assess it, she goes to see the Marxist lesbian uh, with short hair and blue makeup and clownish Barbie that's been raped by time and by the plays of children. So she goes to see this, uh, this Marxist Barbie. And of course, the Marxist Barbie throws all sorts of, uh, all sorts of leftist talk to her. And it's like... Uh, you have, uh, and, and she has this whole conception that there must be a rip in the normie versus Barbie universes. And the two universes are colliding. And that is what causes our mental anguish. And therefore, the, the solution is you have to go into the real world alone to go on a quest for finding yourself and finding back who you truly are. So, and this is so fascinating to me because 
I, I listened to the beginning of this movie, not so much the end, but the beginning is all framed like this is a bunch of white uh, people from Republican areas of the U.S. getting sent to L.A. by the Marxist lesbian short hair Barbie. This is how I experienced the beginning of this movie. It's how it feels very much. And this very scene right here, like this is Barbie leaving a Republican area and going to LA, basically, to be confronted with reality. So they frame this as physical universes just uh, bumping onto one another. But I see it very much as a layout of modern America and how you get a Mel Gibson fresh from the farm, as he says himself. Fresh from the farm, you get brought to Hollywood, and then you discover thing, things that, that are more disgusting than you could possibly imagine. That is very much how this is framed. And another thing that is not leftist and not constant based on this movie is that Ken decides to follow Barbie on her trip to the real physical universe, and he just gets into her car, doesn't ask permission. He brings his rollerblades and it's like, no, I'm just going to follow you. And that, that's the moment where he makes this face is the moment where he shows up. And Barbie realizes she's been carrying him in the car without knowing. She thought she was going to the physical universe alone. But another non-leftist team, she needs a man to be accompanied to the physical universe. Go away says, just join the stream. Did JF commit a crime by illegally watching Barbie? Or did he take the Ansel pill and go to the cinema by himself? I went to the cinema, of course. I never do illegal things. Uh, so now we have uh, the beginning of the movie. We have a problematic, overly feminine world that crushes men's balls and where cans are not properly appreciated for who they truly are, they are not allowed to shine in this world. Now, they get to the real world, and there's a, there's a whole uh, storyline around the CEOs of Mattel basically kidnapping Barbie and trying to convince her to just get back into the stereotypical box. And there's a literal box in which they're asking her to go so they can tie her and put her for sales. Uh, it's all very pataphysics in terms of... It's crazy. It's very French as a movie. It's very uh, imaginative. And so when we get into LA, into the physical universe, we get shown a world where there is no ping. Everyone has brown hair. Everyone is ugly. Everyone is fat. <laughs> That is just what it is. I mean, the, the and Ken, amazingly, this is amazing to me. Ken, coming from Barbie world, where he has been dumped on by the super sexy Barbies that are everywhere, he meets a fat woman in LA. And the fat woman is just, hey, hi, how are you doing? And, and, and Ken is like, what, what? You respect me? Like, you're not treating me like less. And it's like, this is so fascinating. He is honored to just be looked at and respected and talked to politely. Just to not be shunned by the super sexy Barbie is a relief to Ken. That is fantastic to me. And it's another thing that is not leftist about this movie. Where the male finds that by... Lowering his standard a little bit, I mean, in this movie, it's a lot because the woman is really fat. But by lowering his standard, he sees more respect within the feminine hierarchy. The reason he's getting so dumped on is that he, he is in a world where 10 out of 10 females have way too much powers. And uh, encountering the real world, he feels more respect already. Now, the, the, big, uh, the big part that Ken learns from this uh, interaction with the physical universe is the patriarchy. And uh, of course, that's a very leftist part of the movie where Ken tries to get a job. And he's like, I'm a man, I should get the job, right? And the CEO is like, no, actually, uh, 
in fact, these days it might disadvantage you to, to be a man. And you're like, whoa, pretty based. Like, this is an admission that diversity hiring practices are effectively anti-male. But then the, the leftist saving of this movie is that the CEO that wants to hire Ken, he, he talks uh, more whispering to him and he says, actually, we're totally within the patriarchy. We're just making it look like we're not. So there, there was there was one throw where you're like, oh my God, based. And then one other throw where you're like, oh, well, ultimately it's leftist because secretly the physical world is patriarchal. But anyways, Ken uh, sees a video, a montage video, like the kind of montage I was seeing back in the days of the golden days of Richard Spencer uh, you know where they they put these Apollonian figures, Greek statues, soldiers, super male golfers, and they're like, "Man, you uh, you can do better. You you can be the best version of yourself." That kind of crap. And Ken is like, "Oh, and la like this is this is how it works. This is what I need to bring back to Barbie world." So Ken goes back to Barbie world and installs a patriarchy, installs a, a toxic masculinist version of the patriarchy that he has learned from the physical world. Uh, new guy says, golfers, lol. <laughs> but, but that's what it is. Uh, in the movie, I believe I've seen a golfer. <laughs> Like warriors on horses just dominating cities, and then men in armors walking, and then a golfer. <laughs> but golf, uh, you know how how they say that golf uh, means gentlemen only, ladies forbidden, G-O-L-F. Uh, that is a symbol of masculinity, whether we like it or not. Uh, so Ken goes back to Barbie universe and he has the dream of bringing back the ingredients of patriarchy and it takes the form of uh, Barbie land becoming controlled by males. Males own the Barbie houses now. They have been converted with party material like, uh, you know, these opening doors of a bar. So that has been installed on the Barbie houses. And it's just men on a couch drinking beer. And they have mini fridges where uh, they store their beer. Basically, those are the additions that have been made to Barbie World. And the males are more uh, dismissive. The males are like, oh, yeah, you want to be my girlfriend? Oh, yeah, I don't know if I want to be your boyfriend. Oh, let me think about it. Uh, I, I don't know. And so people act tough. And it's the toxic masculinist version. So basically, Barbie Universe in this movie is framed as the bipolar war between extreme female power and extreme male power, uh, both toxic in their own way. <clears throat> um, now, Barbie comes back to this world, and she brings an actual human uh, in this world. So basically, there's the whole story of a Mexican mother with her teenage daughter, and her teenage daughter is totally revolted against Barbie. She doesn't respect her because she's a symbol of capitalism and misogyny. So she's a modern teenage Marxist. But her mother uh, is, is a mother who's designing future Barbies. And she is drawing, she's trying to get, uh, to get her IDs pushed into uh, the world as her commercial IDs around new Barbie forms that are less misogynist. But her mother, deeply, despite the fact that she's working to this leftist affair in the world, deep inside, she is still a child, still dreaming of the perfect Barbie, so still having very much respect because she has bounded with this perfect Barbie. So she respects her and wants to help her. So they go back to Barbie world, uh, both Barbie herself and uh, the Mexican woman with her daughter. Again, relatively based in that 
it is the link between the mother and the child that is important here. And ultimately, Barbie binds back these two conflicting views of femininity. The, the young teenager Marxist and her mother, who's not quite as Marxist as her, and who's deep inside, she loves the stereotypical cute Barbie. <clears throat> Although she, she kind of trends toward the Marxism when she designs her new dolls. So they go back to Barbie land and they are stunned to find that the constitution has been reverted by men, that men have taken over power and that they have installed mini fridges and beer and golfing and all this masculine stuff uh, into Barbie land. Uh, so Barbie coming back from the real world is seeing the state of affair and she starts a revolution. She starts a feminist revolution within Barbie universe against male patriarchy that has been installed by the constitution. And so they arrange this whole revolution uh, through uh, the, in the house of the weird Barbie, the Marxist lesbian Barbie. So they arrange this revolution, and the plan is to deceive men. The plan is to go back to acting like stereotypical Barbies. So for, for, uh, for the, the morning that they start the revolution, they're going to be super kind. They're gonna, and Barbie goes back to Ken, and she's like, oh, I love you, Ken, so much. And Ken is like... Because he's in now his new patriarchal self. He's like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to take you back. Oh, yeah, let's take her back. And he plays guitar to her for five hours. And she stands in front of him like, oh, I, lo I love it so much when you play guitar. But they're faking. They're acting. This is all a plan for the feminist revolution to go by and for females to take back power in Barbie land. So it's all a deception. Um, <clears throat> they succeed with, with this plan. The, the men eventually lose their mind and they go on dancing and singing and they make a whole choreography where Ken is singing and he's like, I'm just Ken. Uh, I'm just Ken. I'm just Ken. And it, it's a whole bizarre musical part of the movie. <laughs> But it works. It kind of works. Uh, but uh, being so busy with their male things of, uh, of acting and singing, they forget politics and the females show up to the vote and they take over Barbie land back. They amend the constitution and they remove the patriarchy. Now, of course, that is all very leftist in terms of themes. But what makes me uh, say that the movie still isn't a leftist movie, is that throughout this feminist revolution, you can see that Barbie has a discomfort. She's not truly within this. And eventually she will leave the world that she has led to, to, mod, to female power coming back. She, she doesn't want it. And you can see she's grimacing when, when the Marxist lesbian uh, is presenting the plan. She's like, oh. It's very clear that Barbie is kind of outside of this revolution, although she participates to it, makes it happen, she realizes that this is, this is also a plastic world. So the females having taken back power, there's a kind of equilibrium that comes from it, where uh, you see one, you know, the, the guys are super sad to learn that they have lost political power, but eventually, they explain to each other that, hey, you went too far, we went too far, maybe it's better, you know, we're still going to be together. And one Ken is like, where's my Barbie? Uh, I'm going to be alone. And, and eventually she, sh she shows up and they end up settling a kind of equilibrium of the sexes that is nice to see. When you, when you see this as the outcome of the movie, you realize that the females have taken back power, but they have learned the lesson that... There was, there was some good things in this patriarchy that, you know, the, the tough uh, behavior of males was attractive. That's what, that's what was drawing them. And so we reach a point of quasi-equilibrium where 
the the females of Barbie world decide, all right, you know, maybe you're not going to be Supreme Court justice because you're just a guy, but we're going to give you some position. And the narrator of the of the movie at this point states, the males were giving back some power. They will have to work hard for a long time, but eventually they will reach the point to have the same amount of power as females have in the real world. Now, this, this sentence is, oh, I'm looking at this sentence and I'm thinking about it. And this sentence is, against, is again, another illustration of this pataphysics, this kind of, this movie is out there. Because when you think about this statement, there's the leftist interpretation of it. Okay, so what you're telling me is women are oppressed in the real world. Barbie universe is an inversion of the real world. It's, a, it's an inversion in that females have all the power and men are trying to get the power, but they are oppressed in that world. And that day that you propose where men will have equal power to what females have in the real world, that day is a day where men are still oppressed. That's the leftist interpretation of this movie. But the more based interpretation of this movie, would be, of this sentence, would be the real world is constantly in oscillation. And currently females have a lot of power. And eventually, males of Barbie world will also oscillate up to too much woman power. And they'll oscillate back down. This movie seems that the second interpretation of, of the sentence is more uh, faithful to the movie. It's more faithful because the movie is all about the equilibrium between the sexes. Now... That is so 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 that becomes Barbie world, this kind of settling down of okay, we we went too far as female, we went too far as male, let's recalibrate things and love uh love will guide us further. Now this movie the sense of the movie you kind of have to dig. The the leftist painting of this movie is very thick, but but you can get there. Now at this point, Barbie sees that Ken has no sense of itself, of himself. And that is one part of this, this movie that I don't like. It's that they separate, basically. She says, you have to find the true Ken, and I have to find the true Barbie, because Ken is desperate, and he's like, I, I, I mean nothing without you. I would have liked uh, if Ken and Barbie kind of found a resolution. But they kind of separate, and Ken stays in Barbie world, or we, we don't know his whereabouts from there. And Barbie says, like, you have to go out there and find the real Ken. And there's this whole very leftist, feminine inter interpretation here, where off oh, Ken slides down a slide and finds his real self. I'm Ken. I'm a man. I'm the real Ken. And he, he finds himself the true self that females told him to be. Uh, that kind of sucks because the true Ken is whatever you were in patriarchy world. It's the guy with the mini fridge. Now, Ken is, is presented in this moment as a super conflictual psychology type of guy where he goes to cry to the shoulder of Barbie and he says, you know, I really didn't like those mini fridges. They, they only take a six pack of beer. They can't even store more than this. They're ridiculous. And so he kind of denies the patriarchy as being him. Uh, that, is, that is a very female moment of this movie. I would simply discard it. You know, sometimes these big productions, they just insert these things to satisfy leftists and fuck this. So at this point, Barbie uh, meets her maker. She meets God, basically. But her maker is the, the old woman who conceived of Barbie back in the days. <clears throat> so this is where it gets the, 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 base, the most based part of this movie. The maker of Barbie says, I've made you in plastic. I've made you uh, stereotypical. No one can be as beautiful as you because I made you uh, artificially. Like I made you to be the most beautiful. 
but she also says that the world is like this in many ways. She says the physical world is uh, like this. People have their idealistic views of themselves and others and expectations and it all gets into a fake image of what people really are deep inside. But she she says, till there was a function to Barbie. It was giving people dreams. It was uh, it was it was young girls creating attachment with a figure, with a model, and that is not bad in and of itself. So then she gives the choice to Barbie of either continuing to be Barbie or becoming human. And Barbie really wants to feel and really wants to, to get engaged with the reality of being human. So she gets the pass from the maker and becomes human. And that's just the end of the movie where she becomes human and then she's immediately thrown to a meeting. And the whole thing is presented super grand, like she's entering a big building and you think, what, is she becoming a CEO or a Nobel Prize like she was dreaming at the beginning of the movie? But no, she's entering a clinic and she's been driven there by, uh, by her Mexican uh, family. And she's entering a clinic and she says, Hi, I'm here to see my gynecologist. And there was a key narration before before we see this scene. The narrator, who is probably the maker of Barbie, she says, uh, so she changed the plastics of Barbie world for the plastics of LA. And she enters the clinic and she says, I, I'm here to see my gynecologist. And that's the end of the movie. So Barbie... I think we can see this movie as a uh, crisis of a teenager because someone that lives in the idea of a teenager or child becoming an adult and understanding the real game is reproduction. And yes, I can have some critics of the idealist, the ideological structure that i had built as child as a child you know the, the barbie that i had built as an object in my mind that is objection obje, objectification of woman but the fact is i'm still an object even when i get into the real world and the only thing i can do as an object the best thing i can do that's the moral of this movie is to get knocked up get a baby and raise them the best i can because ultimately, it's not a problem to be an object. It's not a problem to be idealistic. It's not a problem to have dreams that are bigger than reality and that cannot be achieved. Because on your way to realize your dream, you're going to become a reproductive female. And you're going to participate to the most important thing in life, the maintenance of living being, the continuity of the species the continuity of life. That is quite a lot. That is quite a heavy uh, content, uh, intellectual content for a movie that presents itself as the Barbie movie. <laughs> so all in all, I give a rating of 8 out of 10. It is cringe when it's left this, but ultimately it is a good movie. It is an okay movie. 8 out of 10. It is an heterosexual movie. I stand by it. It is as good as a Barbie movie could be. As good as it could be. Cloud Warmer sent a super chat. He says, Jeff, there are some people drawing conclusions that Oppenheimer has been released at the same time as Barbie. I don't think it's that deep or strategic, but the themes of trying to make Oppenheimer represented in the modern public consciousness far softer then history would recount is curious to me. I don't know exactly uh, the reason why they got released uh, at the same time. I, I I don't have a conspiracy theory on this. Mark D's channel sends a super chat. Thank you so much for supporting the show. He says, Jeff, salut. Thanks for the show. 
if not for you, I would have given zero attention to this movie. After decades of movies having a hidden leftist agenda, is this maybe an example of the reverse? Just enough woke frosting to pass the checklist, but the hidden message is more based than expected? That is a beautiful description. That is exactly how I feel about Barbie. They said, all right, we have to pass the checklist. We have to touch on all these themes. We have to give the diversity hiring actors everything they want. We have to have fat, handicapped, uh, black, brown Barbies. Uh, they, they made everything fit. <laughs> There's even gay cans at the end. I mean, j just... Just old gay cans. And they made all of this, but then they still cemented the heterosexuality, the reproduction, the baby making as center, central to this movie. And the very end can be said to be, well, okay, Barbie didn't get with Ken, but Ken was an ID. Ken was an ID that exists as much in the head of young leftist woman, young Marxist woman. Ken wasn't the real man with the real dick. In fact, Ken had no dick. So he was an ID. And he was a construct of the exaggerated toxic male that exists in the head of the little Marxist girl. And what happened at the end is that Barbie understood she has to get injected sperm from a real Ken. She has to find her Ken in reality. And the Ken of reality will have parts of him that are toxic masculine, parts of it that are feminine, but it's going to be a real Ken. So they kind of totally saved at the end. They totally saved my heartbreak that, hey, why is it that it doesn't work with Ken? It's like if you fr if you understand the full framing of the movie, which is Barbie World is in your imagination. Barbie World doesn't exist. This is a teenager grow a teenager female growing into an adult female, and as she grows into an adult female, she understands that engaging with the imagination of the Marxist on the gender war, it's all plastic. Leave it leave it behind. So let's not forget that this movie doesn't just say capitalism is evil, uh, you know, Barbie world is capitalism and misogyny. They also pack into Barbie world, the Marxist. They are their own plastics. They, they, they are their, you know, they are the ones who made the, the original Barbie, the, the Barbie where females had too much power. And as such... Her becoming pregnant is accepting reality that you're not going to go far in life if you let yourself stop from the reproductive line just because some Marxist child is telling you that this is objectifying you. This is reducing you to a baby producing machine. All of this is the whole ideological baggage in this movie is taken by Barbie, left behind to exist in the ideological world of Barbie universe, which is not a real world anyway, and where Ken doesn't have a penis anyway, and get the penis in reality. That's why, I mean, 8 out of 10 is actually conservative, because 8 out of 10 is because of the cringe. But if you talk of just my view of this movie, how I laid it out, uh, and if you remove some of the Marxist crap, I would give it a 9 or 10 out of 10. This is a good movie. John says, Barbie world as you. Either you take the pink pill or the turquoise one and remain unreproductive. Exactly. There's even a reference to the, uh, to the blue pill and red pill. <laughs> as, as Barbie crosses the universe... Uh, the Marxist lesbian Barbie presents her with two shoes. <laughs> and one is like, you can, you can take this pink shoe uh, and remain Barbie forever. Or you can take this ugly brown shoe and see the, <laughs> and see the reality of LA. That is so, so funny. <laughs>
<laughs> that is so funny. I love this movie. I love this movie. Oh my God.